Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. And now on Tales from SYL Ranch, we're going to have a review of Zack Snyder's Justice League, which I finished watching about half an hour ago. So I don't have a lot that's really scripted about this, and there's kind of a reason for that, and it has to do with the length of the film. And I'll get into why I didn't really take any notes or script anything very briefly here in a moment. So, I guess we'd say that if you've come to this video looking for a review, well, you either have seen this film or you don't care if you have it spoiled for you. But just to be safe, I guess we should issue ourselves a... Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. All hands, prepare for incoming spoilers. Yes, it is a spoiler alert, and that is because I am a secret master of fandom, and that means that the fandom is strong with me. And this isn't a really a boast or a brag, this is unfortunately where you find yourself after having watched, read, and listened to over a hundred years worth of science fiction. The problem with secret masters of fandom is that we are cursed. We simply can't see the new stuff without seeing the century that came before, and we discover that there isn't that much that's original, and it tends to kind of interfere with our ability to enjoy things. One thing I don't do is outrage reviews. You see, there's lots of YouTubers who are simply actors who are portraying outrage because outrage tends to sell. They hate everything with a knee-jerk reflex, which means it causes this weird feedback loop between fans and popular reviewers to the point where basically nobody likes anything. But I don't do that. If I like something, I will usually tell you why in excruciating detail. If I dislike something, I'll usually tell you why in excruciating detail. But I don't do outrage. I, unlike many other reviewers, I am the adult in this particular room. Okay, so I just finished watching it a little while ago. As I said, I didn't take any real notes. I didn't really script anything because, frankly, I didn't want to have to watch this ever again. Oh, this was long. This was painful, frankly. I have a hell of a good attention span. It's... it's I can watch just about anything, no matter how good or bad it is. Sorry, my eyes are hurting still from watching this for so freaking long. They're watering under the lighting. I watched this thing, and it was so long. It was way too long. It was two hours too long, and there's a reason, a couple of reasons for that. One is that it is painfully obvious and it was in the theatrical release too but here it's just painfully obvious that they're desperately trying to catch up with marvel and in order to do that we have to do backstories and origin stories on all of these different characters and it just doesn't work very well it just adds a runtime. It just goes on and on and on and adds things to the story that don't need to be added in because they're really kind of tangential to this story. And the other reason that it was so long was because, oh boy, does Zack Snyder love his slow-mo. Oh my God, there was so much slow motion. Like every other shot, they're slowing it down all the freaking time. Oh, let's slow this down. Let's slow that down. Let's slow this down. I mean, Zach, I knew you liked slow-mo because I watched Watchmen. And I liked Watchmen, actually. I thought that worked pretty well. You know, if you're going to try to take something like Watchmen that is a really difficult thing to adapt, I think you did it pretty well. But you haven't done well on any of the other DC movies you've done, you know? This was, oh, this too much slow motion. And where it really tends to stick out is with the Flash. Now, I got to tell you guys, there's no getting around this. The fact is that the best speedster slow motion and all that that was ever done was done with Quicksilver in the X-Men movies, right? That was where it was done really, really well. You know, you have everything around him freezing or slowing way the hell down. And then he's moving at what appears to us to be normal speed or maybe occasionally a little bit of slow motion, but not much. Or he's speeding up in really super speed where everything's stopped, but he's still moving at extraordinary speed. Well, that's OK. OK, that was beautiful. That was great. That was brilliant. Nobody's ever going to do that better. OK, sorry, they're just not. So when you take the flash 
and you put him into a situation where not only is everything around him moving at slow motion, but so is he. Oh, it makes it all very, 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 very long. That is really my overwhelming takeaway from this, honestly, is this was a long movie, way too long. You could have cut two hours out of it. You know, I, I understand fans wanting to see the Snyder Cut, as we've been calling it for so long, because, you know, the theatrical release was kind of a mess. It really was kind of a mess. But this was a mess, too, but for totally different reasons. You could have taken this and made a theatrical release out of it by chopping an hour and a half to two hours out of it. I mean, that's really this shouldn't have been any more than two two and a half hours it really shouldn't have been there was that much filler that you could have just totally gotten rid of it, it didn't make any sense didn't add anything to the story you could have sped up a whole bunch of the slow-mo you know one of the cool things about superhero movies is sometimes things happen quickly but that wasn't the case in this film oh man did things not happen very quickly there was so much slow motion it was really overwhelming it was really overwhelming now, you can say some good things about the direction. It was directed pretty well, you know, aside from this tendency to do slow-mo. It wasn't edited very well because you could cut out all that stuff, but I get, oh, release the Snyder Cut, release the Snyder Cut, so we got to make it huge and long and a big deal. Oh. But you could have cut out, so the editing was not that great. You could have cut out a lot. You could have done, you know, in terms of direction, a lot of stuff, a lot less slow-mo. Um, you... The, the cinema, cinematography was done well, with the exception of the lighting. Oh, man. It's in the color grading. It is so washed out and so gray, with the exception of the very tail end, like the last 15 minutes of it. No, the last five minutes of it is the only part where it's not washed out and gray. And... You know, I get where you may be trying to make a, a statement at various times, and it's okay to be washed out and gray when you're trying to set a certain mood, but when the whole movie is that way, you know, it comes off basically exactly like Man of Steel did. Washed out, gray, and dark when it should be more bright and in color, you know. And this really comes into play in the final battle sequence, which takes place at night and in a in near darkness and it made it very very difficult to follow the action you know one of the things about the theatrical version which was kind of a mess was the tail and the fight was done in a very orangish color scheme it was easy to follow what was happening this was just dark and washed out and color graded weirdly and it was just kind of a nightmare it was really hard for me to watch, you know, and I have a really good attention span, man. I can watch just about anything for any length of time, but this, it really did start to lose me at the three-hour mark, and I knew I wasn't anywhere near done by then. It started to lose me at the three-hour mark, and, and I, I, I just had to, you know, keep myself constantly focused. Uh, probably wouldn't have hurt to have a lot of coffee on hand. It was just too long. It was too dark just in terms of you know the lighting and the color scheme and all of that by the way why did superman have the black outfit there was no reason for this see superman had a black outfit in the superman reborn comics uh arc that happened after he died in the 90s now 20 or so years ago 20 25 years ago and and that was because it was making a differentiation between him and the clone and the superboy and the mechanoid superman and all that it was making a clear delineation that this was the real superman and after all that got taken care of he got his regular costume back right okay they didn't need to do that black costume here at all in fact it, it, it is detrimental you know superman is the only character out of this whole bunch that you can say is kind of hopeful and upbeat and more of an adventure character, more colorful. But yet he's put in this black outfit because apparently somebody said, <laughs> Hey, Mavis, let's put him in the black outfit. Black is cool. <laughs> but it wasn't. It wasn't cool. It was dumb. 
and it didn't make sense. That one just bothers me as a lifelong Superman fan. That one just bothered me because it didn't make sense in the context. It's like doing, it's like where they tried to copy Dark Knight Returns in Batman v Superman. It doesn't make any damn sense in context. You know, it's fine to try to adapt some of this stuff uh, from comics to the screen, but it has to make sense in context. And it, it didn't. It didn't make any sense in context. Speaking of things that didn't make sense, the reveal of Martian Manhunter didn't make any sense, right? Part of the reason that the scene between Lois and Martha was kind of supposed to be moving is because it was Lois and Martha, the two people who could commiserate together about the fact that they were mourning for Clark, but constantly hearing about Superman and other people talking about him, but they can't say anything about it because that would, you know, do problems with his secret identity. Although how the hell he has that now, I don't know. Back to that in a moment. But then you have the reveal that that whole scene was actually Martian Manhunter. And it sucks out any of the actual emotion that was behind that scene. Martian Manhunter's having this heart-to-heart -heart with Lois. I mean, that doesn't make any damn sense. Oh, and by the way, Martian Manhunter turns out to be the general that we saw in Man of Steel, and I think Batman v Superman as well, which doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense, given that general's attitude, general attitude towards Superman. And by the way, if the Martian Manhunter's running around, and at the very end he shows up and said, well, if you need me, you know, next time out maybe. And you're like, well, wait a minute, you were there, you knew all about this going down, why didn't you pop out just then? We kind of could have used that firepower, duh. It didn't make a lot of sense. It didn't make a lot of sense. I wouldn't have had Martian Manhunter either commit to having Martian Manhunter in the movie or leave him out. You know, don't, don't wishy-washy your way through it. It's just kind of stupid. Other things that made this thing way too long was setting up future movies. First you had setting up, you know, Batman's secret identity getting out and potentially a movie where he's going to be gone after by a, a serial killer. I think it was Deathstroke. Why set that up, right? Because I don't think that's movie, that movie is ever going to happen. I don't think anybody's going to look at this film and say, oh, God, we've got to have Zack Snyder do, do more of our films. You know, he's the one that's driven this into the ground. If you guys really want to see how to fix DC, I have a whole video on that subject linked below in my description box. Call me DC. I will have you making money. Hand over fist, both in print and in films and on TV. But anyway, I don't think he's going to come back for any more of these movies. So why set up that possible sequel? Then they set up a possible sequel where, in fact, Darkseid takes over and Batman is reading, leading this ragtag band of mostly supervillains, uh, a combination of supervillains and superheroes and uh, relatives of superheroes, to uh, go and save the day. And, and you're like, why are you setting that up? Why set that up? I mean, I get that they were talking about Flash going back in time and talking to Bruce and Batman v Superman and all that, and they mentioned it in passing in this movie, but you don't actually have to have that payoff in this film, right? You don't have to have a what amounts to a mid to credits or end to credits scene or something, except that it comes before the end of this film to set up that film that is probably never going to happen. Right, I sure hope it never happens, because God, the last thing I need to see is more dark, dreary, washed out, blech, for four hours. Ultimately, at the end of the day, that's what this movie is really problematic about, is it is far too long. And it isn't justified in any way for being as long as it is. Uh, you know, there are facets of the movie that are good, you know, it is it is well directed aside from the friggin' slow mo. It is well shot aside from the horrible lighting and the washed out color scheme. And it is you know the music is pretty good for what's there and what it is. You you know I, there are places where it's it's too much like watching Watchmen, you know, and the use of music there. But but it wasn't overall horrible. It was good in places. You know, it was good for what it was all right. And that stuff was all fine. You know, the makeup and everything, the special effects were good. I mean, you know, what do you expect these days? You have to be really trashy, like, you know, Batwoman-level special effects on CW to, you know, even call out the special effects as good or bad. I mean, they're fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's fine. It was fine. 
just too damned long much much too long at least an hour and a half to two hours too long this would have benefited significantly by a lot of editing a lot of editing i cannot stress how long this movie is if you don't have a laser-like attention span i doubt that you'll ever be able to even sit through it and I certainly hope that that's the general fan reaction because, by God, I don't want Zack Snyder coming back to do any more DC movies. DC, if you want to fix things, look at my video, How to Fix DC, and then call me, and we will make a deal. That's my pitch. That video is my pitch. Link in my description box, How to Fix DC. So, at the end of any given review, we might ask ourselves, is it any good? No, no, it's not. No, it's much too long, and there is no justification for it, and it is difficult to watch, even for somebody like me who went into it thinking, all right, four hours, I can do that. No, three-hour mark was pretty much my limit. After that, it was just all sensory overload and darkness and blah. So my scale on this, I'll leave it the same scale as I'm using for Superman and Lois. Scale is one is passable, five is Hugo Award worthy, because frack the Oscars, frack the Emmys, frack whatever the hell they're giving out to things like streaming services. Forget all those. They don't matter. The only thing that matters is the Hugo Award. This movie, because of its length, the washed out color scheme, I am going to have to give this one about a 0.7. This really, for me, is not even passable. I would not watch this movie. If you have not, I would not watch it. Uh, I'm not going to ever watch it again. What would be the point? Slogging through that for interminably long hours again. You know, uh, if you're diehard, if you're one of those people who are like, oh, I got to see the Snyder Cut, well, go ahead and watch it, I guess. But if you're a casual viewer, oh, God, no, no, just give this one a miss. It's not very good. <laughs> so I guess that's all that I have to say about that. I would certainly love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks. I'll do my best to get back to you. And as always, certainly like, sub, hit the notification bell, and share me on social media. So thanks for watching. That's all the time that we have today for this episode of Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.